The Curse of Dark Castle was a beloved attraction among many park enthusiasts, and its removal left longtime fans yearning for a worthy replacement. Enter Dark Coaster, an exclusive Intamin Stridal Coaster featuring four launches and theming that pays homage to the original ride. This is Zero G Coasters, and in this mini documentary, we dive into whether this coaster was a worthy investment. Before Dark Coaster, Curse of Dark Castle, which replaced Wild Mouse, a ride now located at Busch Gardens Tampa, opened to the public in 2005. This dark ride boasted immersive scenes, elaborate theming in the queue, and captivating special effects such as water and fog. Upon its opening, it garnered critical acclaim as one of the world's premier dark rides. Themed around a prince named Lundwig, who transforms into a werewolf and traps guests in his castle, the ride underwent minor changes over the years while maintaining its popularity. However, by the mid-2010s, the ride's appeal began to wane, and its upkeep became financially draining for Busch Gardens Williamsburg. During the haunts event of the 2017 season, the attraction was transformed into a haunted house with plans to reopen in 2018. Unfortunately, this never materialized. Dan DePizio, the VP of marketing at the time, announced that the ride building would be repurposed for different events, leaving the ride's future uncertain. SeaWorld Entertainment, the parent company of Busch Gardens, made the decision to permanently close Dark Castle due to low ridership and high maintenance cost. While the show building was utilized for various events such as Hello Scream and Christmas Town, no permanent replacement was named until the announcement of Dark Coaster in 2022. Dark Coaster is Busch Gardens Williamsburg's fourth multi-launch coaster, containing a theme show building, but the ride's dark and sinister theme may intimidate younger riders. Both in the queue and during the ride itself, certain theming elements with within the show building create startling jump scares. Observing the unloading of trains, it became evident that a majority of children appeared terrified by the experience. Moreover, due to the ride's straddle trains, the height requirement stands at an impressive 48 inches and has a low maximum height requirement. This means that children who meet the criteria for Dark Coaster could also ride Loch Ness Monster and Verbolton, both of which are arguably more intense rides. Consequently, Dark Coaster may not serve as an intermediary coaster, guiding children from Grover to Invader or Verbolton. Most likely, kids will skip Dark Coaster altogether, unaware of the intensity of other rides. Many individuals expressed dissatisfaction with Dark Coaster, citing its lack of adequate theming. This sentiment resonates with my own observations, as one can visibly see the other track in certain sections. While some moments pose excellent theming, others feel awkward and disconnected. Dark Coaster's capacity presents another notable flaw. During its opening weekend, the ride accumulated a staggering maximum wait time of 235 minutes. Although the coaster operated at full capacity, quickly filling empty seats and facilitizing swift loading, each train could only accommodate 10 riders per cycle. With only two trains available, Dark Coaster can host a maximum of 20 riders at full capacity. For comparison, Steel Vengeance for comparison, Cedar Point Steel Vengeance has a capacity of 24 riders per train, meaning that one full train on Steel Vengeance surpasses the combined capacity on both trains on Dark Coaster. Considering its 48-inch height requirement, lines at Dark Coaster will likely be lengthy during most weekends and summer days, resulting in guests spending more time waiting in line and less time buying products such as merchandise. Furthermore, the trains themselves pose a challenge in terms of accessibility. As a rider standing at 5'7", I found it extremely difficult to enter and exit the trains, and I witnessed numerous individuals stumbling while trying to navigate the awkward foot position during the ride. It's worth noting that Dark Coaster was manufactured by Intamin, a company notorious for coaster downtime, and there have already been reports of breakdowns resulting in ride evacuations, further worsening wait times. To address the central question, is Dark Coaster a suitable investment? My response would be both yes and no. While the theming pays homage to the original attraction and adds an intriguing storyline, it also may deter younger riders due to its dark and sinister nature. Simultaneously, the ride itself is relatively tame and serves as an ideal stepping stone coaster, offering a compelling argument from that perspective. However, personally, I believe that the ride could benefit from additional theming in a less intense atmosphere. Those are merely my thoughts, and I encourage you to share your own in the comments below. This concludes our analysis of Dark Coaster. Thank you for joining me on this mini-documentary. We hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you on the next train.